Welcome to Training Minutes. My name is Steve White and I'm a battalion chief with the Fishers Fire Department. In this segment, we're going to go over trailer components and systems. We're going to start here at the nose of the trailer and these are where our glad hand connections are going to run from the cab for our service and parking brakes. Also we have our 12 volt connection that runs electrical power from the cab to the trailer. From there, we're going to look at the kingpin. The kingpin is where the trailer connects into the cab at the fifth wheel. Behind the kingpin is a big steel plate that runs about four foot back and is the width of the trailer. This could be a good place to stabilize the trailer. These are the dollies. They're located on every trailer of a semi. They crank up and down in place. This could become an advantage for us that if the dollies are not damaged in the accident, we can lower the dollies down and help stabilize the trailer. Above the dollies, let's take a look at the floor construction. The floor of the trailer is the most stable part of the trailer. The floor joists run anywhere from 10 to 18 inches on center. And when we stabilize building a box grip from the ground up to the underside of the trailer, this is exactly where we want to capture our, our points of contact. You can read it from the outside by the rivets on what's known as the rail. On the underside of some trailers, there'll be a bracket in place to hold simply a spare tire. One thing that we want to point out is that is not an acceptable spot to put cribbing. Anytime that we crib, we want to crib up to the floor joists. Before we go into the trailer, let's take a look at what we're going to call the bumper. It's known by other names such as a DOT bar or ICC bar. We're just going to call it the bumper. On size up, evaluate it. If it's not been damaged, it can be used in stabilization. Keep your stabilization in line so we can transfer the load down to the ground. And if you're not sure, go into the frame rails just inside and stabilize to each of the two frame rails. We're sitting here in the back of the van trailer with the doors open, and we want to talk about some of the construction features. The floor is going to always be the strongest part because that's where we're putting all of our weight. The side walls, the roof are very thin. They're designed to just protect the load from the elements, nothing more. Anytime the load is racked in an accident, it'll easily lean in and bow out the wall, and a lot of times it'll even puncture and go out and make the trailer completely weak. Just like any other approach on an accident, we use our hazmat skills, look at placards, look at markings, speak to the driver if he's not incapacitated, and we want to find out what they're hauling. Typically, there's not any urgency for us to open the doors because when we open the doors, whether they're swing out doors or roll up doors, we have to consider that the load may have shifted. It can actually come down on our personnel. So try to avoid opening the doors at any cost during a trailer accident. The previous trailer we looked at was what we commonly refer to as a van trailer or box trailer. This trailer is what we call a reefer, short for refrigeration. You'll notice the refrigeration unit right here at the top with the nose of the trailer. Typically we'll keep this running when it's been involved in an accident so that we can save the perishable goods in the trailer. However, if we think it's going to cause a hazard because it is a combustion engine, we will have to shut it down. The controls are typically here in the driver's side and they're easily labeled on and off. Another important feature with the reefer trailer is the fuel cell. The fuel that runs the refrigeration unit is not supplied by the cab, it's supplied by the trailer. This becomes a critical factor if it's been involved in the accident, so we'll have to follow our normal hazmat mitigation procedures if it's been compromised. Another key point is we don't want to stabilize this. This is not a point for stabilization. Again, we want to go to the floor joist to ensure good positive contact to stabilize the trailer. This is a low boy detachable trailer. Basically, it's used to haul heavy equipment. And rather than have that heavy equipment drive off of the back of the flatbed, it'll simply drive off the front once the cab pulls away after it's detached. Between the two, what we have are our glad hands for our emergency or parking and our service brakes. One thing to remember is that once we disconnect these from any trailer, that we completely lock the brakes to the trailer. Then we have our 12 volt connection. This line happens to be green, which typically indicates that the trailer has analog brakes. And then because 
We have hydraulics involved. We have two hydraulic connections, and they operate just like hydraulic tools. There's an in and an out of return, and they simply slide back and disconnect. And that's how we can take power, air, and hydraulics separate from the cab and the trailer. Another unique feature about the detachable low boy trailer is that it has a secondary set of air and power connections. They have to be disconnected. And that removes power from this section of the trailer to the back end of the trailer and again ensures that we've locked the air brakes. On this cab that's hauling the low boy detachable trailer you can see on size up the larger tank is for diesel. The smaller tank is for our hydraulic oil and you can tell because it's got pressure relief and you can actually track the lines that go to powering the hydraulics. The next trailer we're going to take a look at is the dump trailer. There's two types of dump trailers. There's a frame and frameless. This is a frame dump trailer. You'll notice that it's got a hydraulic line that attaches to the cab that tows it so it can operate a hydraulic piston that'll lift the trailer causing it to dump. Typically we have stone, gravel, sand, sludge and various types of material that will have to be dumped at its location. At the back of the dump bed we have the gate. The gate can either swing to the side or swing up. It's important for us on size up that if we have a vehicle that's come in contact with the back, we want to evaluate the stability of the gate to ensure that during rescue operations, the gate doesn't open, spilling its contents onto the action area. Simply using chains or a combination of come-alongs, we can secure the gate in the closed position and ensure that it's not going to open uncontrolled. Keep in mind, there are many different types of trailers that run up and down our roads every day. In this segment, we we're able to show just a few basic common types that we see in our jurisdictions. Thank you for watching this segment of Training Minutes, and thank you to Homatro for sponsoring it.